So I think uh, number one, um, this quarter that went by, we've uh, HCL has the largest deal pipeline that we've ever had. Um, we don't call out AI separately because AI is an embedded solution in the digitization and cost optimization journey that a lot of customers are taking. Uh, but it's 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 been great because I think that I remember we met last year and we all talked about how AI is still work in progress and proof of concept stage and and now we've got tangible solutions across different business verticals. Um, we've got we've broken up our AI offerings into four. So we've got AI Force, which is looking at the software development life cycle and how we can shrink that. Mm -hmm. And actually that really helps our engineers. I don't think it actually takes their jobs away because there's a large part of the coding that AI can do. So let's spend and some time talking about this relative to how much time it have taken to get a particular software job done previously. How have you been able to shrink it into what extent? 60%, sometimes 70%, depends on the vertical. But it's amazing because you're able, we had started off on a journey last year where we said that we would also upscale 50,000 engineers in our company on AI skills and on the platforms that we were building so that now they can start focusing a lot more on design and applications. And I think that's what they're focusing on now. And you're saying that this hasn't had an impact on jobs uh, and no. led to so, extra retrenchment win so within the so, so if you see across the industry, not just us, that if there has been a slowdown in hiring, it's been much more at the back of demand and not so much to do with AI. And, you know, I always felt like 2024, 60 countries went in for elections, two of the largest democracies. So it was a year of uncertainty. And I think everybody was figuring out, should we wait on spend? How is it going to go? Now I think... As of yesterday, it's all real. It's all certainty. And we all know what we need to do. I think companies need to know what we, they need to do. We're having a lot of conversations today where now, you know, companies are much more open to, okay, let's go with our budgets. Let's go with our spending. We need to do strategic investments in AI, in the kind of, um, you know, digitization and upgradation that we need to do of our data infrastructure. So we're having a lot more of those conversations where they're like, let's go. So you spoke of four ways in which you're using AI, you explained one, one, which is uh, truncating the amount of time it takes to build. Yeah, some that's software. the AI force. Yes. That's and the then AI. the other three. Then AI foundry, which is, the you know, again, as I mentioned right now, that a lot of our customers across different verticals have, uh, you know, a legacy infrastructure and they need to modernize that and data needs to be monetized as well, uh, modernized as well. So data is a pivotal layer to actually get your AI right. And um, that is a great opportunity. The third is our AI labs. So over the last 18 months, we've opened up a global network of labs, um, one in California, one in New Jersey, London, Munich, two in India, and one in Singapore. And all these uh, AI labs of ours are connected. And so whether we have customers, let's say from financial services coming for solutioning and working on projects in our American lab, we can harness some of those solutions for, let's say, BFSI customers in Singapore because of our other labs. So just opening up the global network of um, AI labs and solutions is also, I think, really going to help us. And then the last is the AI engineering piece. So which is in anything in our ERS business, um, especially in uh, what's happening now with AI chip design and uh, what's going to be the future in semiconductor. So uh, there's lots of opportunities there as well.